Hello wonderful people! Today we're going to be drawing a really cute watercolor fawn and all you need to follow along this tutorial is your favorite digital art software, a basic round brush, a smudge tool, and maybe if you want a drawing brush as well. But don't worry, I'm going to give you tips on finding those as we go throughout the video. But until then, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. Great, so the first thing we need to do before we can start sketching, adding the colors, anything, is making sure we have a paper texture in our file, which is really going to amp up the watercolor effect. If you don't want a watercolor effect, of course, you can just skip that step, but I highly recommend you do it. Now, if you already have a file that has paper texture in it, whether it is mine from my Big Brush bundle or from a different creator, that doesn't matter. You can just go ahead, open that canvas and start with that. But if you don't have a paper texture, don't worry, just pause the video and check out the description below, I added a free paper texture that you can download. It is part of my Procreate Jumpstart Kit, which includes a bunch of other freebies. And the name is Procreate Jumpstart Kit, but honestly, there are options for pretty much every single software, especially for paper texture. That's just a basic image, so it would work no matter which software you're working with. And it also comes with instruction. So yeah, whatever texture you're working with, whatever option you're going for, just pause the video here, get that open in your software, and then we're going to meet up in the first step, which is going to be creating a rough sketch. Awesome, so once you have your paper texture, I'm just gonna go ahead and hide my example here. It might either be a group if you're working with a pre-textured file or just a single layer if you're working with my free paper texture. No matter what you're working with, we're going to create all of the layers in this tutorial underneath the texture so the texture is applied on top of them. So we're going to start again with a rough sketch. So go ahead and create a new layer and put that new layer below, again, any texture you might have. Now we're also going to rename that new layer to rough sketch just so we keep our file really nicely organized. The sketch obviously can be whatever color you want here. I'm just gonna go ahead with a neutral gray. But just a heads up to make this video as easy as possible to follow along for you, I did create a color palette, although it is quite simple as you can see here, it's just six colors, but if you wanna download that, it is also linked in the description below. It is also totally free, so you can pause the video here and just go and grab that just so you're fully ready for the rest of the tutorial. But again, the sketch can be whatever color because we're not gonna see it in the final result. And similarly, it can be whatever brush that you know you're comfortable with to sketch because again, we're not gonna see the sketch in the final result. As long as you're able to draw lines, that's really all that matters. Now, if you're working with Procreate, a good option that I would recommend that is free is in the sketching pack that comes with the app. There we go, the HB Pencil. If you're working in a different software, again, anything you're comfortable with, or maybe something that has pencil in the name would be a good comparable option for this one right here. That being said, in this video, I'm personally going to be working with brushes from my Brick Brush Bundle, especially the Watercolor Pack. And these brushes are not essential at all, but they might help you save some time and get more realistic watercolor results in the end. Although again, I'm going to give you tips on getting those results, no matter which brushes and which tools you're using. If you do want to check the bundle out though, it will be linked in the description below and there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. But again, not essential at all. If you do have the bundle though, we're going to go in the watercolor pack and we're going to pick the coloring pencil. So the sketch is going to be super messy, super rough. We're just going to map out the basic shapes, making sure we have a general structure for a character. So we're not gonna spend too much time on it. It doesn't matter if it looks crazy. It's going to look crazy, actually, that's a good thing. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to draw an oval for the body. So you can literally just go ahead and quickly sketch a very messy oval. Great, so once you have the body here, we're going to use the height of it to help us place the head. So you can just roughly take two fingers and map out or measure out the height, I should say. And then you're just going to bring that to the side and then you're going to just mark the top right here very loosely. And then you're going to stack it on top and that's going to be roughly the size of the head or at least the circle for the head. So you can just mark that as well and then draw a very loose circle. So from there, we're just going to connect the head and the body. So we're essentially going to create the neck and the neck is going to be slightly curved this way. So instead of just going with straight lines, we're going to go in with, well, curves. So kind of like this, again, very rough. And then kind of like this. From there, we're going to finish the head by drawing kind of the nose and the mouth area. And that one, you can just figure out roughly where the middle of your circle is. 
map that out real quickly and then use that as your guide that's going to be the top of the nose. So you can just come in and draw the bottom of the face like this and then you pretty much have the top although this is kind of very pointy so you might just come in and smooth that out a little bit. Again, super quick, super messy, we're just mapping out the basic shapes. Now we're also going to add the ears, and the ears are pretty much the same size as this kind of nose mouth area, but they are going to be more of an ear shape. So you can just, again, roughly look at that and then place that on top of the head. Maybe a little bit bigger, let's exaggerate them, why not? Yeah, like that. Then from there we're going to draw the legs. Those are going to be pretty simple, believe it or not. It looks like a bit of a pretzel, but it's super, super easy. Essentially we're going to start by just mapping out where the legs connect with the body. And to do that you can just draw big ovals. So one here in the back and one here in the front. And then we're going to draw the legs itself, starting with the front one. So the front one you're going to just draw one long oval like this that starts at the back of the big oval and ends, that might be a bit too short, that it should end pretty much in line with the neck. And then we're just going to repeat the same size oval, drawing it towards the bottom to have the lower part of that front leg. Great, now the back leg, the top of it is pretty much overlapping with the oval we have here. So we're just going to measure what we drew in the front, one of the halves. I'm going to go with this one because they're both the same. And then kind of overlap it with the back oval. So kind of like this. And then same thing, measuring it, but this time drawing the lower half of the leg. Great. Now at this stage we have the very, very rough sketch. Before we move on to adding the colors, we're just going to clean it up a little bit so we know what we're doing when we add the colors. And to do that you have a few different options, but here I'm just going to go a super simple one, which is picking black instead of gray. Maybe making my brush a little bit bigger. And then with that, I'm just going to come over and I'm going to figure out which line I want to have in my final illustration. Still doesn't need to be the cleanest sketch, but a little bit cleaner than this. So what I mean, for example, here is, okay, I can see my neck. I have like six, seven or eight lines. So I'm just going to go over and say, okay, this is the one I want to use. So we're just going to go over and do that for the entire sketch. And this is something that should not take you too long. Again, it doesn't need to be clean in any way. We just want to have a better idea of where we're going to put the colors. Now here in the front we should see the other front leg a little bit, so you can just add a very simple curve like this. We're not going to see the whole thing, although maybe, maybe this kind of curve would be better. Yeah, let's go with that. And the back, you could draw it that curvy, but I think it looks a little bit crazy. In my case I'm going to make it more flat than this kind of round shape. Yeah, that definitely looks quite a bit better. Although that back leg butt might be a bit too intense. Yeah, let's go with that. Now the back leg, I'm just gonna give you a tip here. We're going to draw only the front thigh. We're not gonna focus too much on that top oval, but then the bottom oval we're going to draw because that's the bottom of the leg. So essentially we're doing this right here. We're disregarding that whole oval, except maybe a little bit in the back, right here. And then we're drawing the bottom part of the leg. Now for the hoof in the front leg, I'm just kind of having it be an extension, I guess, of that front leg, kind of roughly here. For the back leg, you could have it bent a little bit. That might help add a bit of dimension to the piece, or you could just have it in a line. Let's see what I prefer. I think I'm going to go in line. So just drawing this kind of 
almost triangle at the end of the leg. And we're also going to, that's kind of a detail, but we're going to add this little tiny kind of thumb, honestly, uh, a little bit higher than the hoof itself. Now we're also going to draw the belly. And so for the belly, pretty simple. It's going to be almost a straight line, but you want to make sure that it's in line with the front part here. So you could just go ahead and actually draw it up just to make sure that it's actually connecting. And last but not least, we're going to draw the facial features and the tail, starting with the tail because it's super easy. You're going to draw essentially two curves like this, so it's almost a crescent moon shape, but not quite. And the nose is going to be this gigantic, black, shiny nose. And for now, we're just going to draw kind of a rectangle like this, maybe adding a small mouth as well. And we're also going to for sure add one eye. Now the eye, you can draw it on this horizontal line that we use to help us place the front of the head. It's a pretty easy guide. And you could have it open if you want. You could have it closed to make your deer look kind of sleepy or happy on either side like this. But I'm gonna have it open to make it look extra, I don't know, extra cute. So just this kind of very simple kind of pointy ends on both sides. And we're also going to extend, speaking of the pointy, we're going to expand both sides like this. So at this stage we have the structure, but before we move on to adding the colors, it is a really good time to play with the basic shapes and the proportions to make sure you're super happy with that structure. So for example, in my case, I feel like maybe these front legs are a little bit too far in the middle. So if you see something that you're not a fan of in your piece at this stage, again, because it's just a bunch of messy pieces or messy lines, it's really easy to go ahead and move them around using a selection tool and drawing a selection around what you want to move and then using an arrow tool to, well, move them around, maybe resizing them if you want, really doing any tweaks that you feel might help the piece look a little bit better. Again, we don't need anything clean at this stage. If you have a bunch of lines, that's totally okay. That's great, actually. But we want a structure and proportions and positions that make sense to you, or at least that you like. So feel free to pause the video here, take all the time you need to move your basic shapes around if you feel the need to do that. And then we're going to meet up in the next stage, which is going to be adding the basic colors. Great, so once you're happy with your rough sketch, we're going to lower the opacity of that layer so we can still see it, but it's not too distracting. So to do that in Procreate, quite easy, you just tap on the little N next to the check mark, and then you just lower the opacity slider until you can barely see your sketch. In my case, I'm going to keep it a little bit more opaque so you can see it in the video, but in your case, really lower the opacity as much as you can before the sketch just completely disappears. And then from there, we're going to create another layer. This time, we're going to put it under the rough sketch. And we are going to rename that new layer to colors. So the colors, we're going to start by just mapping out the basic sections and we're going to create something that's going to look absolutely crazy. It's still a case of having to trust the process at this stage, but once we're done mapping out everything, we're going to blend the colors and that's going to start creating the watercolor effect. So for now, we're just going to start with kind of a beige brown. In the color palette, we're going to pick this one right here. As you can see, it's not too saturated, so it's not fully orange, but it's not fully gray either. It's kind of in the middle. And yeah, it's not too dark, not too bright, also pretty much in the middle. And in terms of brushes here, you have a few different options. If you're working with free Procreate brushes or if you're working in a different software, honestly, you can just pick a very basic round brush. And Procreate, that would mean going in the airbrushing pack that comes with the app and picking the hard brush. Now, one thing though, is we want to make sure that we have some transparency in that brush so that we can kind of layer the different strokes and start creating that randomness that is later going to look like watercolor. So to lower the opacity in Procreate, it is this slider right here under the size. Usually opacity of brushes is with the size, so you should be able to find that really easily in your software as well. And the exact amount of opacity is up to you. I would recommend going probably around 40%. But the idea here is really just to be able to have that kind of overlap between strokes when we, well, overlap the strokes. So that is option number one. It's going to work super well, don't worry. 
If you do have my watercolor brushes though, we're going to take it one step further and we're going to go with a watercolor brush. So in the watercolor pack, we're going to use the Dark Edges watercolor. If you've watched some of my other watercolor videos, we're going to start with something a little bit different than what we used to do, which is we're going to go around the entire outline of the fawn and we're going to, well, outline it with a medium to small size brush. The exact size doesn't matter. Just go ahead and test it out before you get started. But the idea is for you to be able to go in enough details to draw the outlines precisely without having to spend, you know, three hours because your brush is tiny. So literally, we're just going to go around the outline. You don't have to worry about however many times you're lifting your pencil. That is kind of a new thing I'm trying with this video. Just drawing the outline. I, I was gonna say quickly, you don't wanna do it too quickly because you wanna make sure you actually take the time to draw it well, but you don't want to agonize over it either. So I'm going to keep my video going in the background here so you can use it as a reference. I'm going to speed it up a little bit though, and we're going to meet up again once we're done outlining our phone. Great, so once you've outlined the fawn, again, you can see pretty quickly, pretty quick and dirty, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hide the rough sketch just to make sure that we've outlined everything. And then we're going to come in with the same version of the brush that we've been using, but bigger, and we're going to fill in the inside. Now at this stage, you may want to try and not lift the pencil too many times when you fill in the inside, but if you do end up lifting it and create some of those overlaps, it's not the end of the world. We're going to use the overlaps later intentionally. So for now, if we can avoid them, it might be a bit better, but it's again, really not that big of a deal, especially for the little font here, because we're going to erase and create some color variation. If you do have overlaps, it's kind of, it's fine. Now it is a good thing to have overlap on the edges though. That's kind of why we started with outlining the whole fawn so that we can have these darker edges. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far, please consider helping the channel by giving this video a like and subscribing if you haven't already. Now, I know everyone on YouTube is asking you to do that, but believe it or not, it does help us and our channels a lot because it just tells YouTube to take the video and show it to more people. So thanks for helping. Great. Now, once you fill in your entire fawn, again, you can see I went pretty quickly, shouldn't take you more than a minute or two. We're going to reactivate the rough sketch and we're going to come in and we're going to start layering that color. Still same brush, same color, but we're going to layer our stroke to start creating some intentional overlaps that are going to later become some shadows. So just making sure we are still on the color layer, not back on the rough sketch layer. We're going to start by overlapping the strokes on the ear that is here in the back maybe overlapping it two, three times. You can experiment with different things. There's no right or wrong way to do this here. Maybe accentuating that kind of corner here even more than the rest. Something like that. Now in theory, we would have a shadow under the head, but the fawn has kind of a white neck. So if we're just gonna leave it like that because we're gonna come back in and erase it anyway. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to spend time working on shadows there. So we're going to move on to the back of the neck, just adding a bit of a shadow here under, under the ear. Then doing the same thing we did for this ear on this front leg that is mostly hidden. Two, three, four times, however many times you, you think makes sense. And we're going to do the same thing on this belly, so between the back leg and the front leg. And maybe a little bit on this section of the back leg as well. Yeah, why not? Now once we've done that, we're going to make the brush quite a bit bigger. 
And we're going to fill in some areas that just need to be darker in general, not because of shadows, just because of you know the fur and how it works on the fawn. So those areas are going to be the top of the legs as well as the head and this section of the neck. So just a bigger brush, again, you can just go over very quickly, very loosely, making those quite a bit darker, well, quite a bit darker, a little bit darker. Just like that. Now, if you are working with a watercolor brush, or at least my watercolor brush, it has some color variation within the brush. But to amp up the color variation even more, we're going to switch the brown to a darker, more reddish brown. In the color palette, it is this one right here. It's not the biggest change in terms of it's still kind of an orange, but it's quite a bit, actually, it's quite a bit more red. So we're just going to use that and we're going to, this time with a medium brush, again, the exact size doesn't matter at all. We're just going to use that to reinforce or change the color a little bit on the top of the back. So again, pretty messy strokes, doesn't matter. We're just mapping out the basic colors and it looks crazy for now, but that is, that is a good thing actually, <laughs> believe it or not, it's going to help the watercolor effect. Maybe lowering it a little bit, bringing it on the belly as well. And maybe accentuating that here shadow right there. Great. So once we have everything mapped out like this, we're going to actually blend all those weird overlaps to create the watercolor effect. For that, you have a few different options, again, depending on what you're working with. If you're working with a different software or with free Procreate brushes, you're going to try and find any kind of smudge tool you have in your software, which is usually a little finger icon. So in Procreate, it is right here at the top. And you're going to select, honestly, whichever brush you want here for your smudge tool. You can very easily experiment with different things. I think something you cannot go wrong with would be just a soft brush, such as the free one that comes with Procreate and the airbrushing pack at the top right here, soft brush. So it's such a round brush that has some feathering on the edges. So you should be able to find that in really any software you're working with. And essentially, if you're working with the smudge tool, all you're going to do is you're going to go over the different overlaps. It might be a bit too big of a brush. Let's see. Yeah, you're going to go over all the overlaps and you're going to try and create some of that, you know, when the water and the watercolor mixes the pigments together, you have some blending, but like it's not uniform. So you're going to create that randomness by smudging your colors with some randomness in your movement. So you don't want to be smooth. Essentially, all I'm saying is you don't want to just go and be smooth. You want to have some squiggles in the way you blend. That might be a little bit too much, but you know, you get the idea. If you do have my big brush bundle though, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the paintbrush, not the smudge tool, really the paintbrush, to from the watercolor pack at the bottom of the list, the water blender. And the water blender does a very similar thing to the smudge tool, but it has the randomness already within the brush. So you're going to save quite a bit of time here. You can just have a medium to big size brush and you can go over your lines very smoothly. As you can see, it does add that randomness. So at this stage, you might actually want to go ahead and either hide the rough sketch or make it really, really pale just to make sure that you can see really well what you're working with. And when you're blending, you might notice that your colors are going to go a little bit all over the place. That is not too bad of a thing. You obviously don't want the shape to become a full on blob, but if your outlines become a little bit blurry, it's not the end of the world. Once we're done with this step, we're going to come back in and we're going to use the eraser to clean them up a little bit. Otherwise here, once more, I'm going to stop talking here, but I'm going to keep my video going in the background so you can use it as a reference.
So feel free to pause the video here, take all the time you need to blend your overlaps until you have something that looks kind of like this. And once you're done with that, we're going to meet up in the next step, which is going to be creating the outlines before we start erasing and adding the details. Great, so once you have your basic colors like this, it should look a little bit better. It still looks a little bit messy, but it's starting to look more like watercolor. We are going to reinforce the edges. That step is optional though, but I really like to add these kind of outlines that look like colored pencil. That's just something I like to do. If you're not a fan of that, you could just skip ahead to the details part. If you do want to add outlines though, we're just going to create a new layer above the colors. And we're going to rename that new layer to outlines. For the outlines, we're going to use the same dark brown that we just used, so we can just stick to that. And we're going to go back to the pencil brush we were using for the details, or for the sketch, I should say, earlier on in the video. So if you were working with free Procreate brushes, that means you were working in the sketching pack that comes with the app with the HP Pencil. If you are working with a different software, something that has pencil in the name. And if you are working with my watercolor brushes, we were using the coloring pencil. And here, before you start, make sure you test the size. You don't want something too big, but you don't want something too small either. It is a, a personal preference. Everything is a personal preference, of course, but especially these kind of outlines, if you want them to be really thick and visible, you would have thick outlines. In my case, I want them to mostly help distinguish between the different elements, because for example here, this line between the head and the ear is really, how to say that, it's really mushy. <laughs> So I'm going to use this brush to come in and, for example, just clean up the line a little bit. So that's exactly what we're going to do. You could have either just a few little outlines like this whenever you have overlap between elements, or you could have outlines everywhere. I'm probably going to go with outlines everywhere just to show you what that would look like. but. It's a case of just adjusting it and drawing outlines where you think you would want them to be. So once more, I'm going to stop talking here to let you focus on drawing your outlines, but I'm going to keep my video going in the background so you can use it as a reference. And once we're done with drawing the outlines, I'm going to show you how you could also use this coloring pencil to add some extra grit in your shadows. Oh, and I'm almost forgetting, this is a step where if you want to add extra details like, uh, I don't know, like a line like this in the ear, you can definitely do that. Maybe adding the smile as well. All of those kind of details, you could draw them. And I like to draw them, as you can see, with very rough lines. So I don't want it to be too crispy because I feel like that looks a little bit too digital. I think if they look more rough, it looks more like sketch, more like pencils. Again, that's a question of personal preference, but I just thought I would let you know what I like to do and why. Great, so once you have all of your outlines, if you feel like some shadows could be a bit more crisp, especially in kind of nooks and crannies like between the ears, you can use the same color and the same brush just to refine those shadows in that area. So it's kind of like you were coming back in with your coloring pencil to really just crisp up some shadows that should be quite dark and precise. So I'm probably gonna do that here on this ear 
maybe below the ear in the front. But I definitely don't want to overdo it because I want to keep the watercolor pigments effect. Great, so feel free to pause the video, take all the time you need to finish up your outlines, and once you're done with that, we're going to meet in the final chapter, which is adding the details to make this piece look good. Great, so at this stage, we're just going to start by erasing all the little blurriness that we have outside of our shape and that we don't want to keep. So we're just going to go back on the colors layer, and we're going to pick a hard brush as our eraser. So the most basic hard round brush you have in your software. In Procreate, again, that would mean in the airbrushing pack, the hard brush. But here we do want to make sure that the brush opacity is 100% so that we can come in and erase whatever we need to erase. And we're also going to use the eraser to add some white sections on the deer. So fawns have, again, a white front of the neck, but they also have a bunch of dots on their back. Now you could just go ahead and erase straight onto your color layer, but I feel like we spend a lot of time working on that kind of pigments blending. So I'm going to personally erase on what is called a mask. Now masks are available in most software, so you should be able to find them. In Procreate, quite easy to create a mask. You just go ahead and tap on the color layer or whatever layer you want to create a mask on. And in the menu here, you're going to select mask right here. Now that's going to create a white rectangle above your layer. And essentially what that does is now if you come in with your eraser and you erase on the mask, it's going to look like the color is gone. But if you were to just hide the mask or delete the mask, the original color is still there. So it's always a good idea when you spend a lot of time working on a gradient or something like that and you want to erase some details on top of it to use a mask instead. Now if you're just confused at this stage or if you don't have a mask, not a problem, you can just erase straight onto the colors. Now to erase these details though, I think it's a good idea to go with more of a softer brush. So if you're working with free procreate brushes or if you're working with a different software, you would switch to a soft brush. So again, just a round brush that has some feathering on the edges. But if you do have my big brush bundle, we're going to pick in the watercolor pack, the soft grainy watercolor here. And so with that, we're going to start by erasing the front of the neck right here. And we're going to do that in a few little strokes, or a lot of little strokes, I should say. Now we're also going to erase the very front of, or what's going to be below the nose. So just a little bit like this. And also above the eye, so for that you might go ahead and reactivate the rough sketch just so you can see where your eye is. You're going to erase above that. We're also going to erase in the ear and the back of the tail. And last but not least, we're going to add all the dots, focusing them on the back and the top of the legs. Now those dots can be various sizes. No, they can be, they should be various sizes. And what I like to do, at least if you're working with a soft grainy watercolor brush like me, is overlapping different little strokes or different little eraser sections to have edges that are a little bit less erased and then a middle that is more erased. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and leave me a comment below with the words spring art. And if you're a bit confused with what is the secret password thing, essentially it does a few things. It also gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and paste the videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you. So once more, if you've watched this far, just go ahead and leave a comment below with the words spring art.
Now, once you're done erasing all of those dots, we're going to just blend, especially the front of the neck right here because it looks a little bit crazy. And so for that, you can either just go back to your smudge tool if that's what you were using or the water blender. And still make sure you are on the layer mask and not the colors itself. And then you're just going to blend in those erasing marks. <laughs> whatever that means. Not over blending them, we still want to see a little bit of that texture, but not quite as much as that. Now you could go ahead if you want, if you feel like your dots are too harsh, the edges of your dot are too harsh, you could go ahead and blend over them. I think I'm going to keep mine as they are, most of them at least. I kind of like having that texture, but you could just go over and blend them in a little bit if you wanted to. Okay, so at this stage we only have a few little things left to do, but they're going to completely transform the piece mainly adding, you know, the facial features, but also adding a bit of grass and maybe leaves around the fawn. So we're going to start by drawing the hooves, the nose, and the eye. And for that, we're going to create a new layer that we're going to put above everything else we have so far. So even above the outlines, but below the texture still, of course. And we are going to rename that new layer to black. Now I say we're going to rename that new layer to black, but we're actually not going to use a pure black. We're going to use a very, 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 very dark brown, which in the color palette is right here. You can see it's almost black, but it's not quite there. It has a little bit of color to it just to make it more interesting. And here for the brush, you have a bunch of different options, again, depending on what you're working with. So if you're working with free program brushes or if you're working in a different software, you can go back to the hard brush that you're using. But this time, instead of using 40% opacity, probably going around 70, maybe even 80%. If you are working with my watercolor brushes, instead of picking the dark edges watercolor here, we're going to pick the thin, intense watercolor. And we are going to reactivate our rough sketch, of course, so we can see what we're doing. I think mine is just way too intense. I'm going to lower the opacity of that sketch a little bit. Hopefully you can still see it in the video. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing the eye. Super easy, just following the sketch that we have. And the nose, we're going to refine it a little tiny bit. So it's going to be essentially the same rough shape as this big rectangle, but we're going to add a nostril and we're going to bring it down towards the mouth. I'm also going to draw the who's with the black. So we have these kind of weird triangle shapes, but don't forget also the extra little toe on the leg itself. Great, now from there we can go ahead and hide the rough sketch once more. We're just going to add a bit more depth to all these black elements that we just added. Well, all of them, mostly the nose and the eye. And you could add those details on the black layer if you wanted to, but I'm just going to create an extra layer on top just to make sure. <laughs> and I'm gonna rename that layer to, let's just go with lights. So we're going to draw two types of light. One is going to be a brown light, kind of soft reflection, and then one is going to be a bright white outline or highlight. <laughs> so we're going to start with the brown light, and that brown light is just going to be the same brown we use for the main part of the fawn, so right here in the color palette. And we're going to go back to whatever brush we use for the sketch and the outlines, so a pencil brush, like the coloring pencil brush. 
and we're going to draw a crescent moon shape on the bottom left side of the eye. Now we're going to add also one little line on the nose, kind of going across the nose. Nothing precise as you can see, but it already helps make them a little bit more dimensional. But to really make them pop, we're going to add, like I mentioned, the bright white outlines. Highlights, I don't know why I keep saying outlines, I'm sorry. The bright white highlights. So you can just pick pure white, it's right here in the color palette, but otherwise it's just a normal white. And we're going to start by adding one big, or one medium, I should say, circle in the front of the eye like this. And maybe an extra small one right here on the bottom left. Now we're also going to add a highlight on the nose, and it's going to be mostly on the top of the nose. I like to draw it in two parts, kind of one oval like this in the front, and then a thin line like this. Now you could go ahead and add highlights on the hooves as well, but I don't want to draw too much attention there. That's really another point. I want the focus to be on the face, so I'm not going to draw more highlights than this. Now the last thing we're going to do is draw a bit of grass and some leaves just to anchor our font, because right now it looks completely lost. And so for that, go ahead and create a new layer below everything we have so far. So below colors, but above the background, although we don't really have a background. And rename that new layer to grass. Now for the grass, we're going to use, well, green. <laughs> what a surprise. We're going to start with this one right here in the color palette. You can see it's quite desaturated. We're not going with something vibrant because otherwise that would really distract with the fawn. We just want to add some extra colors because yeah, right now it's just kind of brown and boring. So this green right here. And if you're working with free brushes, you're just going to stick with the hard brush, this time lowering the opacity back up to 40%. But if you're working with my watercolor brushes, I'm kind of doing a tour of the different brushes, I guess, as I'm doing this. We're going to work here with the basic watercolor brush. Now, whatever brush you're using, go ahead and set that to a medium size, I guess. And we're just going to quickly brush a little bit of grass under the fawn. Now, if it overlaps with the fawn itself, it doesn't matter. We can always come back in and erase it as we go. And the closer you are to the fawn, the darker that grass should be. And once you've mapped that out, just go back to whatever blending tool you were using. So either a smudge tool or the water blender. and just blend in the edges a little bit because right now it looks absolutely crazy. I don't want a perfectly smooth gradient, but I definitely don't want those weird overlaps. And if you have any green overlapping with your fawn, just go back to your eraser, set it to the hard brush if you are not with that anymore. And then erase any overlaps that you don't want to have. And last but not least, we're going to draw some very simple branches. You could just draw blades of grass, but I'm going to draw a little bit of a kind of a leafy situation. You could draw those on the same layer, but I'm going to create a separate layer just in case I want to move them around. And I'm going to rename that new layer to branches. Now we're going to start with the same green, either sticking with the same hard brush, or if you're working with my watercolor brushes, we're going to go back to the dark edges watercolor instead of the basic watercolor. This time it's going to be a small brush, 
and you can place those branches or blades of grass wherever you want. I'm going to have two in the front and then three in the back. So just starting by figuring out roughly the composition I want. And then coming in and adding the leaves themselves, which in my case are just going to be these really thin kind of ovals in groups of two on both sides of the stem. Maybe thickening the stem itself as well. <laughs> Now you can always come back, of course, and erase any unwanted overlaps. In my case, I want them all to be behind the fawn, but you can have them in front, in which case you would erase the fawn and not um, the branches. And to finish it up, we're just going to come back in with a darker green. So this one right here in the color palette, it has a little bit more blue in it as well. And we're going to come back in with the same brush we use for the outlines, and we're just going to crisp up some details on the leaves. So pencil, HB pencil, coloring pencil, whatever you have available to you. And in my case, I'm just going to draw the underside of each leaf or of a few of the leaves at least. So super, super quick, but it, it will help the leaves look a little bit more, I don't know, less messy, I guess. So if we compare them both, you can see not that huge of a difference, but still these just look a little bit crisper, more structured. At least I, I prefer them that way. If you enjoyed this video and want more watercolor tutorials, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more for you. But before you leave, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I post every Saturday with bonus videos on Tuesdays. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.